You know what they say about love, it hits you like that. And sometimes you feel aroused for some things you don't want to be aroused to. Sometimes you're not even sure if you are aroused by something else. And sometimes it just happens when you least expect it to happen. I for one think I have actually experienced every single one, but I never pursued any of it. Mostly because, well, especially when you get into the situation where you don't really know what it is, because mostly you don't want to. And in the end it's maybe not like that, maybe it's just that one person. And sometimes when you meet that girl, you do realize you have a, a special crush on that girl. But in the end, you realize it's just that. It's a playful crush, it's nothing else. But I have never really experienced, like, I met that one person, that one girl, and that one happened. But, what I, th but I do think I r can actually uh, see, see the situation about, uh, oh, what's that word? People y trying to set up another. Because I think I actually, one my family once actually tried to set me up with one special girl. Don't ask me why, I think in the end they just felt like we were meant for each other. But that's not about this. And also, the mystery is tightened. The angry anime fan here. And this is the episode 7 of Amphibia. We're introduced to a new frog. Uh, Ivy Sandrew, a tomboyish childhood friend of Sprig, which is actually a little bit strange. I thought Sprig didn't have any friends, but I guess he had one. And a, an occasionally sparring partner and a tomboy that uh, Anne says Sprig is actually in love with. It doesn't help though that Hop Hop actually wants to get in the good graces with Ivy's um, mom, Felicia, because. Uh, well, he, he wants to get a special discount at her shop, so they are trying to do a Firefly format dance that uh, that will actually unify them. But in the but in the end, all they actually but of course they're not gonna do that. And instead, while uh, the Springers uh, actually tries to well intervene and help in the matter, they run into. Giant love doves. Yes, you heard that right. Love doves. They are doves that are crazy in love, but also have teeth and are monsters. Once again, throwing the nice speculations of the things that is the monster world of Amphibia. So in the end, Ivy and Sprig saves the family. Also, the one who actually tells the the families, including Anne, that they were selfish and stupid and all of that set up is surprisingly Polly. I guess it's not so surprising, though she can be clear when she wants to. But of course, the episode ends with Sprig realizing that he is indeed in love <laughs> with Ivy. Actually, uh, Sprig, this episode also references, you know, that goth girl that seems to have some crazy voodoo-like powers, which is actually a pretty fun moment. Uh, the next episode, though, is that Anne wants to spend more time with the planters as they're going on a campy trip, so she follows along with them, where they run into Soggy Joe, a crazy survivalist frog that talks in an accent I'm not exactly sure of. At first I thought it was uh, a Texan, or no, I mean Southern, like all the other frogs, or mostly all other frogs, and then suddenly it sounds more Australian. I mean, it's Fred Tatasukuria. So, well... They tell, he tells them many different survival stories, including of the Mudman that uh, attacks people here. And in the end, they ask Joe and the Mudman attack. So, uh, so as, they, uh, as the Mudman attack, and suddenly remembers that all the, the frogs uh, 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 don't like to be clean, throws certain bath bombs and them, and the mudmen are actually revealed to be wimpy frogs, or more precisely, cannibal frogs. Yeah, you heard me, this right. Amphibia goes into some pretty dark situations, although I think this is actually a truth in television, because there are some frogs, or even toads, that are actually noted to be cannibalistic to their own species. So, this is actually not so, uh, well, wrong, uh, well, it's wrong to eat can your own kind. Although to be fair, if humankind could eat the other humankind, then maybe 
you, many things would have lowered in the food court, but unfortunately it's impossible for humankind to ever get the taste of human flesh. And if they did, well, we would just have anarchy, am I right? So it makes sense that the cannibal frogs of the amphibia world are tribe people. But here it goes a little bit detail that yes, there are cannibal frogs, and I have a feeling we are going to see more. And it turns out that uh, Soggy Joe actually survived being axed because he had a axe-proof West. And also Anne reveals that she lied about having experience in camp because she wanted to spend more time with the family, showing again some heartwarming moments in the situation. And she actually decides to reveal to the planeteers, the planters, how she got here. The, the busted music box she and her friends opened and transported them to Amphibia. Uh, Hop Hop looks at the chest but says he doesn't know anything. Although the episode ends quite uh, maliciously as we see Hop Hop going through a old box saying it is just as I feared as we see a picture of the Calamity box which is the same music box that and came from, or a tra was transported here too. The plot thickens, and how do uh, Pop Pop have a book that details so many things? And why is that called the Calamity Box? It only transported humans to Amphibia. I mean, granted, uh, humans in a frog-like world can be quite a calamity, but what is the true purpose of the uh, box? Either way, I mean, uh, Ivy uh, Sandu, she has an adorable voice, it's Katie Crown, and I have to say she is quite cute. I can understand why Spring would actually find her attractive, I mean, don't get me wrong, she's too young for me. But I do wonder, uh, are they two gonna become an item? Nah, I don't think. You know, some people actually shipped Anne and Sprig, and Anna just said, uh, well, while I cannot really deny that I haven't liked all of them, um, Disney's pairing, especially of that star versus the forces of evil. I do think that even Disney won't be so foolish to pair up a frog and a human. <laughs> even though they're technically, well, you know what I mean. In fact, I'm not even so sure that Anne is interested in boys, but that's another story. I'll, but the second episode goes in a little more detail in the, in the heartwarmingness where the fact Anne feels left out and how sh she feels like planters are really her second family. And again, also goes deeper into the darker world of Amphibia. Amphibia is not a colorful place, it is a crazy world of survival. Cause now we're even introduced to cannibal frogs. So yeah, it may look colorful, but Amphibia hides darkness inside of itself. All in all though, I have to say, this episode felt a lot better than some of the previous ones in a while. So you give me your thoughts if you have any.